Okay, see, <clears throat> my intelligence is being played with, and I don't appreciate it. Tyler, why do you and I always have to go through this? Like, why is this necessary? I think you get off on this. And I'm like, come on through, cook, yeah. I want to put my soapbox, that's basically it. Let's talk about drag and all its forms. What? Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for season six, episode 13 of the Have and the Have Nots. And as I said, I feel as though my intelligence is being played on, again, the way that it does, only over at Tyler Perry's place. And none of this stuff is, is making any sense. You trying to make us think that Oscar is so good of a crook, but he don't even remember numbers. Oscar is that bad that he could go steal all your goddamn money, but he don't even remember account number. Quit playing. We're going to go on. We're going to talk about it. Okay, so first things first. Candace done figured out that she done balled Oscar up. She calls downstairs. She gets the cute little boy that was at the jail with uh, Jeffrey. And last thing that we actually need in this is really new characters and you're steadily adding on new characters now this little boy he's cute to look at so we won't let it slide but all this new character shit like stop it you're not even handling the storylines that you already have going on so the last thing you really need is some new folk to fuck up like seriously anyway so the little boy comes upstairs because Rocky's not around and he knows what to do. He goes and makes Oscar throw up. Candace is like, you know, Candace, Candace is about on my nerves because her attitude is real nasty. She's giving you female superfly. She really is. She's very her attitude, she's a pimp. She she got the whole pimp the pimpstress thing going on. And she's an irritating bitch at this point. But she's like, I could have did that. And he's like, mm-hmm, so why didn't you? Little boy, you don't know me. And he's like looking at her like, yeah, okay. He got basically the same attitude as she does. And I'm looking and I'm saying to myself, so at what point, Tyler, is this little boy going to be attracted to Candace? Because I think he's going to be attracted to her candor. Foolishness. But whatever. They go back and forth. He gives um, Oscar an adrenaline shot and brings him back. Okay, so I'm already upset. Already upset. Because I don't want no adrenaline shot at junkies back living. I want them dead. I want it Oscar dead. Let's make this shit interesting. Let's put a little realism in it. All this, you know, everybody's ODing and coming back. How many times is Wyatt did OD? Now I'm sick of it. Everybody that ODs don't come back to life, Tyler. Some motherfucker dies. But whatever. So he comes back and they, he's like, Candace, what did you do? This, that, thing, the other. She takes his stuff and throws him out in the hall. He go back to his room. His laptop's all beat up. He's like, Candace, what did you, what did you do? What did you do? This, that, the other. Calls downstairs. Telling them to send him up. A, he needs to get a new laptop. Just that the other. They're like, we can't do that until tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, he ends up the next morning running to get a new laptop. Gets up into the account and um, goes in there, and he's like, oh, okay, the money's all there still. This that and the other, blah blah blah. Now you want us to believe that Oscar didn't realize that his balance that that why his balance was in an account with a different number than what he'd been dealing with all this time. Because remember, Veronica had the manager at the bank set up that account with the crier name on it. But when you set up an account, it always has a different number. 
I don't give a damn if it's just the last number or the last two numbers. Oscar is a crook who does accounting and books and all of this. You want me to believe that Oscar didn't notice the difference in the account number because he wouldn't even know that account number. That account number wouldn't even look familiar. I don't want to hear that shit. My mama is an accountant, okay? And she don't even deal with accounts with the kind of money that Oscar's talking about. And I know how this chick remembers numbers like this. My mother and numbers, they live in the same world, okay? I don't want to hear that shit, Tyler. I don't know who you think you're dealing with, but this is just bullshit. And this is why there's always this fluctuation of have and have nots. This is what the problem is. You're going to mess around and have your damn show off the air because you can't keep playing with the fans. I, I, it's something I've noticed since I've been reviewing this show. People come and people go. People don't really stick with the have and have nots. I hear more times that people leave and then they might pop back in. I hear people who are watching reviews that don't watch the damn show. It's bullshit like this that makes all that happen. But do, do I need to tell you how to do your job? Obviously, I do. But whatever. It's ridiculous. It is just ridiculous. But anyway, so the money's showing up in the account that Veronica has set up. And Oscar ain't paid no attention to the fact that it's a different account number. He's thinking everything's all good. We will talk about that account one more time, but later on. That's that that thing got on my nerves. Okay, so later on um, in that evening, we're going to go back to the day before. We're back to the night before. Um, Candace goes downstairs. She talked to a little cute guy again. I don't know what the little boy's name is. But here he just, out of the blue, ends up telling her about what happened with him with Justin. Now, i seen this in, I think it was Stanley. Stanley and Lynette, random TV reviews. But I think it was Stanley who actually said that a man, a man, not a sissy, and he didn't say that. That's me and my shit. But a man would not be so quick to be telling people, oh, you know what, um, I, I, you know, I was in the back of the car and he did this to me and he did that to, to me. And that's the truth. That's the truth. There's something about your manhood that you wouldn't be so willingly apt to tell somebody that somebody that made you give them head or that you took head from this other. You wouldn't do that. Like, you just wouldn't do that. He is just as willy-nilly telling everybody, hey, had a little dick on the side. You know, he's all, just all willy-nilly. Tyler, stop playing. And yes, Stanley, you're dead on. No, nobody would. Even, I don't even think, because like, even with Jeffrey, now Jeffrey is gay. Jeffrey ain't been comfortable telling nobody really what Justin did to him. So just bullshit. Anyway. Okay. So he's going through this. Candace that ran his ass to the goddamn dirt. When she, you know, because they just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I said, them two. They would make a good pair not to date, really, but I think he's going to be, I, I, I just get this thing, this feeling that this little boy's going to be like, yeah, can you know, because can't all the men want Candace. So I, I get this feeling that he's going to really be taken aback by her, but she just let him have it and told him, he's like, I'm straight. She's like, mm, are you? I'm straight. She's like, uh-huh, unless, unless the pay is right. And then he's going to tell her, well, the pay must not have been right because I didn't sleep with him. And I said, did you just, now you admitted to being fondled and honey, but now you done admitted to being gay for pay too. Girl, if you don't shut your goddamn mouth, you talking ass freak. He talked too damn much. He cute as a button, but he goddamn talked too much. I wanted to say, shut your goddamn ass up. Just tell it all. I went walk to the corner store with his talking ass. But anyway, so all of that went on. It's a whole mess. So then there was another scene where we get some more mess. Rocky 
is sitting there talking to y'all. Remember the other little guy that works the front desk? That's Catherine's little boy toy. He's still fluttered around playing with Catherine, trying to lead her on, thinking that he done found a cash cow in Catherine. And him and the other guys laughing about that. Him and Rocky's laughing about that. Then Rocky's telling him about the whole situation with Oscar and Candace and how he got Candace the, the numbers to do whatever it is that she had done with Oscar and they are putting this shit together. And he's like, hey, I want my cut of what it is I said. Now, Rocky, you gonna fuck around and Candace gonna have your ass shoved up in a corner somewhere like a dead roach. Now, you... you you got a little power, but you have no power here. Rocky, you be playing around. Candace will do your ass. So I said, okay, so we're going to have some problems, I guess, out of Rocky for Candace. Rocky, please don't make Mitch come get you about his woman. Please don't. Please don't. Because Mitch will come for you. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. But anyway, so we got all that going on. Um, Melissa. Melissa is in the kitchen in the morning and Hannah comes down and they have this little heart to heart and Hannah talks to her about literally being pregnant with a baby that you don't want, but how God will take care of it. And by the time the baby is actually here, you will learn to actually be in love with your embryo. And that's kind of, you know, I, I can believe that because like, how do you carry something around and you know, again, but I wasn't a woman the other day. You know, so I don't know. Whatever. But anyhow, so they have all that conversation, and Hannah tells her how she can stay there at the house for a few days till she finds out what she's going to do to that thing and the other. In the meantime, in between time, Veronica, I guess, has a tracker on Melissa's phone because that's the only way it could have happened. I've seen her on a computer tracking somebody. And I know that, you know, she was taking care of everything for Melissa. So I'm thinking it's Melissa's cell phone. She didn't track Melissa to where she's at. And she called Benny and said, oh, so you got the whore at your house. And he tried to lie. You know, I'm starting to really dislike Benny. I sound like a liar. And I really hate a man that really thinks that he's really slick and cute. And that is very much Benny. Benny thinks that he's Mr. Good Dick. And he thinks he's real, real cute and sexy. He is cute. And he's sexy. But, Benny, you're a fucking bump on a log. You're stupid as fuck. So, to think that you could really run circles around anybody is ridiculous. But, Benny, you are messy boots. You, like that girl said, you came in my house and fucked this whore on my couch. Why would you do that? And he's all like, huh, yeah. And, you know, he's all laughing and key and, and I'm looking at him like, Benny, you know what? Just for that. Just for thinking that you could just do that and be that. Like that. I don't give a fuck what Veronica does to you. Whatever she does to you at this point, I'm going to have to take the stance that you deserve it. Because you're disrespectful, punk. You're disrespectful. From the beginning of you messing with Veronica, first you done went and had her burp your bird in her husband's truck and you nutted all on the ceiling of her husband's truck. Disrespectful. Then you talk shit to and stand up there and try to fight with her husband. Disrespectful. Then you talk shit to her. Treat her like she ain't nothing but old goddamn cougar and that she should be so excited and happy to be getting some of your young dick. Disrespectful. Then you done turned around and fucked her daughter-in-law or soon-to-be daughter-in-law who's pregnant on her couch in her house. Benny, you know what, baby? Whatever happens from here on out with you and Veronica, whatever she gives you, you truly do deserve. And I, I just have to, y'all. I'm sorry. I don't know how y'all feel about it, but I'm taking Veronica on this one. Who the fuck do v Benny think he is for real? Like, for real, Benny. And you ain't even got no goddamn job. You ain't got no income. You ain't got no car. You borrowing your mammy's car, riding around in Ubers, laying pipe and talking shit. No, sir, Benny. Whatever she does to you, that's on you. Anyway. Moving on, he went on and did all this, talked all this smart talk, and she told him, Benny, let me tell you something. 
Baby, I'm going to get you. Don't you think that I'm not going to get you. I'm going to get you, motherfucker. And I'm going to get you good. Believe that. I said, girl, get him. Get him. So, prepare yourself. Okay, so then, this is the other thing that really worked me out with Benny. Melissa comes up to the bedroom door. This punk sitting there on the bed, when she come in the room, he going to take and pull the covers up on him. Because he, all he had on was just like some um, shorts. Bit, he going to pull the covers up on him like she don't, he don't want her looking at him. Didn't you just have your dick in her not 12 hours ago? Not 12 hours ago. Had the nerve to make a comment about her stomach sticking out and showing. It didn't matter whether that her stomach is sticking out whenever the lips of her coochie was sticking out. You was okay with that. And he is just talking to her like shit. Now, there's some pieces of that that I don't feel too bad about, Melissa, because you were a whore and you performed as such. You put yourself out there and threw yourself out there trying to get back at at uh, old girl, at Veronica. And I think that was some of it. She really did want to fuck Benny, too. You know, just like, you know what, well, I might as well, if I'm going to jump on something, I might as well jump on him. But, girl, you should have jumped on um, Mitch instead, but then I'd have had to get you. But, you know, you know girl, yeah, I'd have, I'd have really drug you, bitch. Same way Veronica did, out the door and down on the porch, honey. But anyway, but that was kind of, you put yourself out there, but the way he's treating her, who does that? You can't stay here. You ain't called your mother and all that. And I'm looking at her like, girl, you better than me because I can't even imagine if I made the mistake and busted open for somebody who was talking to me like that, I would black Benny's eye. I would black his eye. And I ain't going to tell y'all no lie. You sit up here talking to me like I ain't shit. I might not be shit, God damn it, but you better pretend. Boop, boop, out of black Benny's eye. I would have. She'll tell him, your mother said I could stay, so that's that. Whatever, girl. But anyway, I said, oh, this is just too much. Too much. Okay, so let's go down to the jail. Veronica that ran down to the jail to see Jeffrey. They get into an exchange. She tells him, I'm going to get you on out of here. All you have to do is sign these papers. And he looked at the papers. He's like, this is a lie. Benny didn't kill Quincy. No, this is not what she's like. It don't matter. He ain't nothing but a thug. He ain't shit. So you sign the papers and it'll clear you up and his ass will be going down. And that's the end of it. Honey, Jeffrey gets to laughing at her and tell her, oh, so he didn't want you. You came on to him and he didn't want you. Is that what's going on? Baby, why'd he do that, honey? Veronica got just as bad. She will say, oh, so what? Now you want him, girl? I said, oh, Lord. Her crazy was kicking in, honey. So she started accusing Jeffrey of messing with Benny. And Jeffrey was like playing on. He was like, no, I don't want him. <laughs> but he doesn't want you. I said, oh, Jeffrey. So they going back and forth, back and forth. And then she told him, she said, well, whatever. I'm out of here. She said, you do what you want. I put you, because she said, don't, she said, Jeffrey, don't make me remember why I put you here. I said, oh, bitch, you really tries it. But she told him, it'll take you a year to even get an appeal once this all goes down. So you're very stupid. I'm out of here. It is what it is. Goodbye, Jeffrey. And then he will tell her, oh, I'll sign it. I'll Now, I don't know what's going to happen because we didn't see any more about that. But David is actually on his way down there to the jailhouse. So, we'll see if David gets there in time. How are you pushing it? Um, Yeah, all that. I ain't even going into this whole David and, and uh, Erica thing. They still lying to each other. So, they like each other. Both of them full of shit. Anyway, last thing. Well, last two things. Gia and Candace. So Jim gets down there. Gia and banged Jim out. Gave him a hot shot. He over there sleeping. She come over there to Candace's room and they going back and forth talking. And she going to say, he's so funny. This, that thing and the other. Honey, that Candace said. 
and smack the shit out of it. I said, girl, if you, child, listen, Superfly, you got to stop hitting folks, child. She smacked the shit out of her already and told her, you're nothing but a whore. He don't want you. They're nothing but Johns. I mean, she gave her a good lesson. But I think there was a little bit of jealousy in there because there is a little thing. When it comes to Jim and Candace, Jim and Candace do like each other. They do, the both of them. They have a love-hate relationship. I don't think she loves Jim, but she's infatuated with Jim because Jim is as evil as she is. And I think there's like a, a cat and mouse thing where she enjoys the fight of Jim and how the two of them go at it. I think that there's a sexual attraction when it comes to Jim and Candace. Because honest to goodness, I think Candace is more sexually attracted to Jim than she is to Charles. Um, there's part, you know, it's that evil part of Charles that really makes her, ooh, yeah, honey. And that's what she gets from Jim with his old nasty ass, old bastard, old geezer ass, old Geritol ass bastard. But she, you know, there's that that evil thing, honey. You know, the devil likes the devil, honey. So that it is what it is. So I was like, this is all a mess. So she's in the midst of talking to Gia. So about Gia said she got $1,500 off of Jim. And she's like, how the hell am I going to live off of $1,400? That's $1,400. Bitch, you sucking dick and fucking and ain't getting but a hundred dollars? Oh, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. I ain't even standing around walking around in them hills all this time for no hundred dollars. But you got to take the hills, keep the hills on, wear the cute lingerie. Well, wear the cute lingerie and stuff. It's cool. But wear the damn hills, get banged out, sucking dick, giving people hot cocktails, and you ain't giving a hundred dollars? Girl, use a poho. I said, that's a hot mess. But anyway, as she's talking to Gia, she gets an alert in her phone that the money is all where it's supposed to be. She will tell her, you know what, girl? As a matter of fact, you can keep all that money. That's what I'm going to do for you, bitch. Keep that money. Get out. I'm done with this, this business, you, all of this shit. I'm out of here, bitch. I ain't got time. She get the begging and pleading and... Oh, no, 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 Candace. She said, if you call my name again, I'm going to smack the shit out of you, bitch. I told you to get out of here. She put her out. I said, okay. Goofball goes back to her room. Jim's in there. She's crying. Jim wakes up, and he goes to consoling her. And then he's going to say, come on, I'm going to make you feel better. He's going to slide that old dick on her, honey. And she's going to say, that ain't going to make me feel better. And then he snapped out and was like, Ah, bitch, I ain't did all this crying shit. If I want to hear all this crying shit, I'm going with my goddamn wife. I ain't trying to do all that. He going to throw the money at her. I was like, I'm out of here. Fucking crying ass bitch. I'm out of here. Left, she going to break all down. Oh, I said, girl, shut up, bitch. I was just so done with her. Shut your ass up, you goddamn goon. So that was that. Last thing. It's past midnight. Benny goes, not Benny, Lord, Wyatt goes to get the money out of the Mac machine to give to Mitch's uncle. Well, of course, the Mac car's not working. Last day we see, he said, you fucking playing with me? About my motherfucking money? Because he was all high up in the bathroom in the stall. I said, look at you all high up and laid up in the shit house. He pulled that gun on Wyatt. I said, And that's where we end it. Listen, Tyler, somebody's ass better get killed. Now, he better shoot wide, fuck wide up, or something. Somebody better die. Now, this is a couple weeks now, and ain't nobody died, and I'm getting itchy here. This is just really starting to bother me. Somebody better take a fall. Something got to go on, because you're talking crazy. This storyline is going all over the place, and a lot of this shit ain't believable. Let's go, Tyler. Let's go now. Damn it. All right. Later. I'll catch y'all next Tuesday. Bye.